One of the new enhancements in Lightroom 3 is the new import dialog. So when we go to import photographs, all we do is we just click on the import button and then you're going to see this new panel. Now this could appear maximized. You'll see there's a little arrow there where we can make it larger or smaller. In this case, let's start with it minimized so we can look at these options in an uncluttered way. There's three main options we're going to look at at the top. The first one is where are we taking these photographs from? And we can click it and notice that there's a list of different places. In this case, we've chosen the EOS Digital. So I'm actually importing from a flash card on my camera. And I, you, you could import actually directly from your camera if you wanted, but I recommend using a flash card because it's much faster and it saves your camera's battery. Then the next option is we get to decide, okay, how are we going to do these? We can copy it as a DNG, which will convert it to a DNG on the fly. Or we can just copy it over and copy photos to a new location and add to catalog, it says there. So that's going to uh, keep them on the card, but make another set of them in the location we choose. We can move them, or we could add them. Notice these two options are grayed out because it's coming from a flash drive. And... Uh, we definitely don't want to leave them on the drive and then erase them or you would lose your photographs. If we chose to bring it from a different location, say for example, you chose it from a computer, notice these other options now will be available such as move and add. And we can also choose the location. And to do that, we just maximize it here. Once we maximize it, we can choose the different locations here of where we could be bringing these photographs from. And now we can see we have the options to move and add. To move them would remove them from the current location and keep them permanently in the new location. And to add would just simply add it to the catalog without moving anything. So that's kind of handy when you're browsing images on your local computer. So in this case, we now get to choose where we move them to. Obviously, if we're just going to add them, nothing gets moved. If we copy them over, we get to choose a new location and we just simply click on here and we can just go through and choose other destination and you can locate that from your file folder where you want to copy these images over to. Let's go back to the flashcard here and let's look at some of the other options. Right now, here's the photographs that I'm importing. These are the ones on my flashcard here from a little photo shoot that I did with Lana. And, you know, we can see here's our information here. Let me just collapse that a little bit. And we can see here's all the different sources here. Now let's go over here and notice all of these are checked, which means they'll all be imported. Well, a new option available, if we want to check these and say, hey, you know, let's have a look and see if these things are in focus. Do we want to keep these? We can switch the option here, which is a loop view. And now this enables us to actually go in and examine these photographs. We can go back here. Let's pick another photograph and examine it closer up. I don't know. Let's let's say grab this one here. And I just double click and it will actually open in the loop as well. And we can also zoom it here and change the zoom. And so we can examine these photographs and decide whether or not we want to import them. And if you can just turn them on or off here and say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to include this or I'm not going to include it. And then if you hit the arrow key on your keyboard, you can actually go to the next photograph. And we can have a look at it. And we'll look at this one and say, you know what, this one's not very good. It's out of focus, so let's uncheck it. We click the next one. You know, that one will work. Let's keep that. And you can see this is the workflow we're doing. Just going through the arrow key, just quickly checking these photographs to see whether or not we want to import. And when we're done, let's go back to the grid view. It's actually just trying to catch up to me right now here. And there we go. So we can see that some of these have been unchecked. We unchecked that one that was out of focus. So that's not going to be imported anymore. Now there's other options that we can choose to, um, to add as we import these photographs. Notice here we've got a lot of options here. We can handle our files in different ways. We can choose to render our previews right now. 
We can go for the standard one or one or whatever types of previews we want. We can make a second copy if you wanted to do a backup copy. File renaming. We can rename our files to something more easy to remember than just these typical numbers. And now we can also choose to apply develop settings, which I never do on import, or metadata. And the cool thing about the metadata is we can actually apply a preset if we want. So I'm actually applying my basic preset. I'll hit the edit so you can see it. And what I'm adding here is just some of my copyright material. So we could just actually just go in here and let me have a look at my basic one there. There we go. So we just click done. And so we import that. Then we've got the destination. We can put it into a subfolder if we want, which is kind of useful. Um, and I'm actually going to put this one. And so I, that'll actually put that into a subfolder on my computer so I can find it. Now we can organize it by date or into one folder. I'm going to put it into one folder. Some people like to have the little folders for the dates. Personally, I don't like that because it makes it more difficult and clumsy when you're browsing in other applications such as Bridge. Even though you can choose to show the subfolders, I just personally like it that way. And then this is showing me exactly where I'm going to copy these and it's going to create that new folder here and these are the drives it's going to go to. Uh, we've got other options here under the presets here. We can save these settings as a new preset. If I click import card, click create, then that means later on I can select this here and it'll take all these settings and remember them so I don't have to keep entering them in all the time. And then when we're done we just click import and it will start to add all of these into the library and it'll import them. You'll see it take a little moment here because there's quite a few files. And then just one of the words about uh, when you're importing them from your camera, if you can use a card reader, it's so much better. It's much faster and once again it saves the batteries on your camera. So we can see now it's starting to import these photographs and it's starting to display them and it's going to add them to our catalog here it'll it'll just add them in when it's done so um, there's no real reason for you to sit here and wait while all of these import so we're just importing these photos and you can see that it's actually really nice that new dialogue that allows us to import from a flashcard from a camera we can import from a CD or a DVD from an external drive we can locate photographs on your computer so there's many different ways of bringing your photographs into Lightroom